10 years of JCH. Now for something a little bit different. I have been running JCH now for 10 years and during that time I've seen a lot of really interesting cameras, lenses and photography related things. And I think I have learned a lot but also I've gained a lot of knowledge and I have an understanding of cameras and lenses and so on. So I thought it would be really interesting to put together some top 10 lists and the first one I want to do is my top 10 favourite rangefinder cameras. Now before all of you lot jump in the comments saying oh you missed so and so camera you don't know what you're talking about. Please remember this is a list of my favourite rangefinder cameras not the best rangefinder cameras though I'm sure some of you will jump into the comments anyway so enjoy yourselves. I have selected 10 cameras and I am going to rank them based on seven criteria. There's a lot to get through, so we better get started. Before we begin, I'd, uh, I thought I'd point out our merch, if you haven't got some already. Come and grab some, support the channel, and help us keep on making great videos. Okay, cheers, bye. So I have come up with a series of seven metrics that we can rank these cameras for a total of 50 points. The first series of metrics are going to be 10 points and they are as follows. Usability. How is the camera? Is it easy to use? Is it ergonomic? Is it friendly to use? Are you enjoying yourself while you are using it? The next one will be build quality. What is the craftsmanship like? Is the camera durable? Is it well made? Is it tough or is it weak? We don't know. And the last one will be range. What accessories does it come with? Can you get lots of lenses for it? Can you get flashes? What can you use with this camera? The next series of metrics are for five points and at the top we have price. Is the camera expensive? Is it good value for money? And is it a good investment? The next we have is serviceability. Can this camera still be repaired and will it be repairable in the future? How long is it going to last? Next we have styling. How does it look? Is it easy on the eye? Fit and finish. And then we have status. Does it give you street cred? Are you going to get props for this camera if that sort of thing is important to you? So all of these will bring, bring us to a total of 50 points. There's a lot to get through. We really had better get cracking. Unfortunately, we don't have all of the cameras on this list, but we do have some of them. So we are going to show you the ones that we have got and we better get started with the first one, which is the Leica MP or more specifically this one, my Leica MP6. It's on the list because this is my grail camera and it's my list. It has everything I want. It's perfect and I've got one. So it makes it onto the list. Now, let's get started on the grading. Usability. It's a Leica, isn't it? It's pretty easy to use. Only thing, maybe it's missing some key functions uh, that others would can, you know, need on cameras, but um, it's a bit fiddly to load. It's not the quickest, so I give it eight out of 10. Next up, we have build quality. It's a Leica MP. I mean, come on, it's beautiful. It's fit and finish is fantastic. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go 10 points on that one. Third, we have the range. Uh, well, it's a Leica. There's just an endless, endless, endless amount of accessories and bits and things that you can go and put on it. Um, but not absolutely everything, and some of them are expensive. So eight stars for that one. Now, next up, we have price. Little explanation about price. Price is based on the value. Um, so if it's five stars, it's you know affordable, it's easy to access, and the lower the stars, obviously more expensive. This is very expensive, not necessarily easy to access, but at the same time, it's an investment. Uh, it's gonna make money, so I've given this one uh, three points. Um, next up, we have serviceability. For now, the Leica MP is serviceable. You can get them repaired and for the foreseeable future, it's good money to do so. So yes, this is serviceable. Absolutely sure, five points. Next, we have styling. Look at it, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it is to me anyway. So I've given it five points. 
And last we have status. Well, yeah, it's like MP. I mean, we're sort of strumming on a theme here, but yeah, it does apparently give you status. So yeah, five points. Right, we better total this up, hadn't we? And the total we have got for this one is 43 stars, 43. Next up, we have the Leica M3, the boss, the granddaddy, the one that started it all. The Leica M3, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. It sort of changed photography. So we better grade it, haven't we? Now, one, usability. Usability, this is a very easy camera to use. Finder is absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's a Leica, you know, you're not gonna go wrong with this, but it has its limitation that it's set for 50 mil, so you can't use everything on it unless you start fiddle faddling around. So for that, I've given this one six points. Okay, number two, build quality. Everything was based on the build quality of this. It is absolutely astounding, it's beautiful, and for a 60 year old camera, it still looks fantastic. So yeah, build quality on these is very good. And I have given, for this one, build quality 10 points. Okay. Now, range. Leica ecosystem is massive. You could put all sorts of things on this if you knew where to look for the names and numbers for them. But you couldn't put everything on it. And that limited that somewhat. So range, I've given it eight points. Okay, now, price. These are going up, they're getting more expensive. Everybody wants one, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing. It's still available, you can still, they're still relatively affordable, and they are gonna go up in value. Price, I've given this one three points. Now, serviceability. Amazingly, for a camera of this age, it's still really easy to get it serviced, and you can have just about any issue on this camera repaired, even now, okay? And there's lots of people that are doing it. So, serviceability, yeah, absolutely five points. Styling, Iker M3, it changed how people perceived cameras. It's absolutely gorgeous. The lines, everything about it, it's iconic. Okay, so yeah, of course, five points. And status, yeah, man, having an M3 is a status symbol, for sure, 100%, no doubt about it. Absolutely five points. So, Let's have a look. What have we got for the total on this one? 41 points. Not bad. Up next, the Zeiss Icon ZM. Now, we don't have one of these, so I'm just going to talk to you about it. Pretender to the throne. Fantastic finder. Very well-designed camera, extremely capable. Not that pretty. Doesn't sound very nice. Feels quite light a little bit cheap, but it's still a really, really seriously capable camera. So, better get ranking on this one. Number one, usability. Usability, it is very functionally, functionally usable. It is really easy to use. It has lots of cool things on it, so I've given that one eight points. Number two, build quality. Yeah, build quality isn't so great on it. Um, they are a bit fragile, they're a bit, uh, they're like a high strung horse sometimes. So build quality, um, I'm going to say eight points on that one. It's good, but it could be better. Uh, range. Now the Zeiss Icon ZM, it can use all of the M mount lenses, which is very cool. Um, but it doesn't have that much of a range in its own ecosystem. And for that, I've given it six points. The price. Price is a bit of a pain on this one because they have effectively almost tripled in price in the last couple of years. And it used to be a very affordable rangefinder camera. It's less so now. So I've given that one three points. And on to the serviceability. For now, you can have this camera repaired. That's fine. It is still serviceable. But we don't know how long that will continue to be for. So. Uh, but at the moment I've given it five stars. Styling, styling, it looks all right. It has its fans, that's for sure, but it is very practical. Um, so I've given it four points. And the last one, status, 
it's not that much of a status symbol, three points. Okay, we better top that one up, and we come up with 37 points. Well done. The Mamiya 7, the medium format monster. And we do have one of these. Absolutely fantastic camera, rangefinder, beautifully designed. Does feel a bit cheap and limited in what you, lenses you can use with the camera, but the lenses that you can use, absolutely fantastic. Let's grade it. Okay, usability. So, this camera is very easy to use. It's very straightforward, it's very simple. It does exactly what you need it to do. And it has got some pretty good functions on it too. Uh, usability, I've given this one eight points. Build quality wise, it's plastic. It, it feels well made, but it also feels a little bit fragile. Um, so it, you are concerned, the finder can easily get knocked out. So I've given that one eight points. Range, okay, well the Mamiya range is not that big for this camera, unfortunately. Um, you don't have that many choices, so I've given it six points. Price, price on this has gone absolutely bonkers in the last couple of years, and they used to be quite an affordable camera, less so now. Uh, I've given this one two points for the price. Now, on to serviceability. Yes, you can have these cameras repaired, still there are places that are servicing them, so though some of the more difficult technical problems, they can't be serviced. It's not perfect, so I've given it four points. On to the styling. It's certainly got a look. It's quite unique. Um, and it has its fans. I like it. I think it's very utilitarian. I've given it four points. And last one, status. Amongst photographers, those in the know, if they see you carrying one of these, they think, yeah, that's pretty rad. So yeah, four points. Let's total this one up. And we have 36 points, a solid effort. Up next, some say the ultimate rangefinder, the Machina 6.7. Is it though? It's a very interesting camera. The lens on it is outstanding, um, but functionally it is a difficult camera to use and it is definitely not intuitive. So let's get grading. Okay, now, first one, usability. Well, as I said, it's not an easy camera to use. Um, this one is actually a bit of a mess to use, so three points. Build quality, difficult one. Build quality on this, it is beautifully made, but it has some really fragile points in the camera, so it is easy to break. Build quality, I've given this one seven points. Range, there is no range, none at all. You can basically get like a hood and stuff for it, that's about it, so yeah, range, one point. Price, expensive, but does hold its value. Not such a bad thing. Um, I've given this one two points. Next up, serviceability. Yes, they can be serviced, but it is extremely expensive to have it done. So, serviceability, yeah, it's gonna get three for this one. And then we have the styling. Well, yeah, okay, it's gonna win on this. The styling is fantastic, it looks absolutely incredible, it looks everything you want this sort of camera to look like, so five points. Last one, status. Those in the know know that this is what they think the boss, so this one again, five points. Let's top this one up, and we have 26 points. Hmm, not what I was expecting. Next up we have the famous or infamous Nikon SP. Now, again, I don't actually have one of these at the moment, so we're just gonna talk about it instead. Nikon SP is the camera that sort of defined the rangefinders for Nikon, and it came with this fantastic range of cameras, lenses, parts, everything you could possibly need. It was its whole ecosystem, and it was great. Okay, let's get grading. So, first up, Nikon SP, we have the usability. It is a very capable rangefinder. It is not as easy to use as the Leicas, which is perhaps where some of its failings were. It was a bit quirky, but again, it was an easy camera, camera to use and it had lots of features on it. So usability, I'm going to go with 
six points. Okay, next, build quality. It was made beautifully. It feels fantastic. It's so smooth. It feels solid in your hands. The finder is beautiful. Build quality, yeah, absolutely 10 stars on this one. Next up, we have range. The Nikon S right line had lots of lenses, lots of accessories, flashes, extras, all the things you could possibly need. Nikon, very capable company. So range is gonna get nine points. Next up, price. Prices have gone up for these. Again though, good investment. You could uh, definitely sell it for what you paid for it, so I'm gonna give it three points. Um, next, serviceability. Serviceability, these are still serviceable cameras. They are, and you can have them done, so four points. Styling, styling, it looks fantastic. It really does look the part. It's got that sort of 60s functional cool styling about it, so. I'm gonna give it four points. Um, status, it's very cool. Perhaps not quite as cool as a, as a Leica, still very cool, four points. And the uh, total we have there, so is 40 points. A really, really good effort from the Nikon. Up next, we have the Canonet QL17. This little beauty, the ultimate budget rangefinder perhaps. Canonet or Canon made absolutely tons of these things. It was the people's rangefinder and there was a whole series of cameras like this on the market at the time. Um, good value for money, great little camera, good to get started with. So let's get started on grading. Usability. Um, usability, this camera is easy to use and it does most of the stuff for you but at the end of the day you still have to know a little bit about photography to use one. So ultimately I gave this one six points. Build quality, they were well made for what they were, but they are a budget camera and they do break and it might not be worth repairing them. So build quality, I've given it four points. Range, well there isn't really much of a range on this camera. Um, you could get a few accessories, but that's about it. Range, unfortunately, three points. Price. They have become more expensive, but they are still good value for money. You can find them cheap. Price, I'll give them five points. And then on to serviceability. You can have these cameras serviced and it can be cheap, but if there's lots of problems, it can be expensive. It might be worth just chucking it away and finding another one. So serviceability, four points. And then on to styling. Styling looks pretty cool. Iconic, I guess, um, but nothing special. I've given it three points. And last one, status. I guess for some, it, this perhaps, you know, some hipster in the middle of Brooklyn, this is a status symbol. Um, it does have a certain cachet cool about it. So yeah, I've given this one three points. Total add up, and this little bad boy got 28 points. Well done. Okay, next up we have the Fuji GF670. Perhaps the ultimate rangefinder medium format camera? Fuji would certainly like to think so. Very capable camera, 6x6 and 6x7. Beautiful rangefinder on it. Um, does have some faults. The, the door is quite fragile, easy to break. It doesn't feel that well made, but the lens is amazing on it. Very capable camera. So let's see, let's get grading. First up, usability. Usability, this camera is easy to use for photographers. Um, it wouldn't be a first time beginner's camera, so it doesn't score perfectly on that front. So usability, I'm gonna say seven points. Next up, build quality. Fuji make their cameras very well. It is a well-made camera, but it is a fragile camera and it does have weak points. So it is pretty easy to break, um, especially if you don't handle it well. So uh, build quality, I'm gonna say six points. Range, the camera doesn't have a range. You can buy a leather case and a hood for it. So that's your range. There isn't one, uh, one point. Price, expensive. It is an expensive camera, but at the end of the day, the price is going up. So buy one, use it for a year, probably sell it for what you paid for it. Not such a bad thing. Price wise, I am going to go two points on this one though. And okay, next we have serviceability. You can have this camera serviced. 
and Fuji will fix almost any problem on it, but you have to send it to Japan, it's a pain. Um, so it's not that serviceable. So serviceability, I'm gonna give it three points. Um, next up, styling. Pretty bland, doesn't look that special. It's very good at what it does, but you know, doesn't, it's not gonna set the world on fire. So two points. And the last one, status. Status, amongst photographers, for sure, um, people who like medium format will be, well, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to say four points. Okay, and we come to a lovely total of 25 points. Well done, Fuji. Up next, we have the Fuji GSW 690 one, two, or three. Don't actually have one at the moment, so let's just talk about it. A big, bold camera for big, bold people. Uh, very good at what it does. Very sharp lens, very nice. Quite big, unwieldy, not as easy to use, so got some caveats, but let's get into it. Let's see what the point, uh, let's see what the points do. Number one, usability. As I said, it is very good at what it does, but it's not the easiest camera to use. You do need to have a bit of camera knowledge to use it. So usability wise, I'm gonna say six stars for this one. Build quality. Early ones were made of metal. Later ones, yeah, made out of plastic, didn't feel as solid, weren't brilliantly made. Parts of it could break quite easily. So um, build quality, I'm gonna say six stars. You do need to look after them. Range. There isn't really much of a range with this camera. It comes with a hot shoe cover, a hot shoe, and it has, a, you know, a remote release, and that's about it. So range-wise, yeah, two points. That's that's all that's going to get. Um, let's see price. They've held their price as well. They are getting more expensive, but they're still within reach of most people. So I'm going to say three points for the price. Next up we have serviceability. They can be serviced and a decent engineer can keep one of these going for a long old time, but you do have to look after them. Serviceability, I'm gonna say four points for this one, solid. Styling, it is what it is, a massive camera. Um, you can't hide it really, you can't make it look spelt and cool. Um, so I'm gonna say three points for that one. Status, it is a status symbol among some photographers, but. It, you know, it's just a very big camera. So it doesn't have that much of a, a street cred thing. So uh, I'm gonna say three points for that one. Now let's tot it up and see what we got. Yes, the GSW690 got 27 points. A solid effort from a solid camera. And for the final camera, we have the Yasuhara T891, the Japanese quirky, weird little rangefinder, which was actually made in part by Cosina. So it's kind of got the insides of a Zeiss Icon or a Voigtlander camera, but it's got this cool outside design. It's for L mount lenses. Interesting, interesting little camera. Let's find out where it scores. First one, usability. It's, it is easy to use uh, in that it's a rangefinder. It's very straightforward. It has very similar functions to the Zeiss. It doesn't have all the functions that I would want, but it is a very basic camera. So. I'm gonna say usability, six points for this one. Build quality. Interestingly, they were only made in very, very small numbers. So the build quality was a bit iffy. Um, the kinks couldn't be ironed out because they didn't have the time. So earlier ones had issues with fogging. You have to be careful and light leaks as well. You have to be careful on them. I'm gonna say um, build quality on this one is again, it's a six stars. It, it's not perfect. Um, range, now range wise, um, it had the L mount lenses, uh, which is brilliant. So there's a huge ecosystem of lenses, but it didn't have much else. So I'm gonna say a three for the range. Price wise, held their prices very well. Um, relatively expensive, but they have gone up, um, but you can still get them for reasonable prices. So I'm gonna say a four for the price. It's a good value camera. Serviceability, uh, quite limited actually, serviceability on this one. Um, you, I believe you can still have them serviced by Cosina. Uh, so serviceability, I'm gonna say four stars for that one because I think you can still have them done. Styling, it looks very cool um, in its own quirky, weird little way. It looks almost uh, military-esque 
in its top plate. So yeah, I kind of like it. I think it's a five star, a five point. And the service, uh, sorry, the last one, status. Status on this one, it does have status appeal. It is pretty cool, but most people don't know what it is. They would pass it by, so I'm gonna give it three points. Let's top that up and see where we get. And that one, the Asahara, makes 31 points. Well done. Okay, so let's see where they've come. Let's tabulate everything and, and see what the rankings are. Just one thing, points, stars, kind of interchangeable, slipped up a bit there, but you know, they're right next to each other in the dictionary, it doesn't really matter. Check it out, look it up. Okay, so we're gonna go backwards. 10th place, we've got, let's count them up, and in 10th place with 25 points is the Fuji GF670. Interesting, I thought it would score higher, but it seems, there it is, 10th place. Now, in ninth place, another camera that I thought would score higher, the Machina 6.7, the ultimate rangefinder, yeah, in ninth place with 26 points. Now, in eighth place, look, let's have a look what we've got. Another showing from Fuji, the GSW 690. I thought Fuji would score higher up the rankings, but there you go, the numbers don't lie. Seventh place, solid effort from uh, the Canon, Canonet QL17. Seventh place with 28 points. And in sixth place, what have we got? Sixth place is the Yasuhara. A surprise entry there, Yasuhara T891 is in sixth place with 31 points. Now, halfway there, fifth place. What do you think it's gonna be? It is going to be the Mamiya 7. The medium format monster got 36 points. Getting up, getting up. Now we're into fourth place. Fourth place, everything's still to fight for. Fourth place, we have the Zeiss Icon, the pretender to the throne. With 37 points, it scored very highly, but not quite highly enough. Third place. Now, who's gonna be? Who's it gonna be? It is the Nikon SP. Nikon SP comes in with 40 points. Very solid effort there from Nikon. Second place. Second place, there can be only one. Second place is the Leica M3 with 41 points. And of course, number one, first place is the Leica MP, the MP6 with 44 points. Absolute stormer there, just came into the start in this absolutely unbiased criteria here. So, I hope you enjoyed our little video. I hope you had fun, and if you're still watching, thanks, please like, subscribe, and support us, and come back for more. See ya.